actually uh, finally publishing the uh, community updates to YouTube for anybody who has not noticed. Um, if you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, you will get the community updates as they are recorded. However, usually I have my intern uh, fill them out, but I haven't had her working uh, for, you know, because she's at school now. And so there's been a lag. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to get these done. I got my new intro going. Um, everybody's excited. So here I am. <laughs> Let's go ahead and let's put this live. All right, what do we got going on this week, Skip? Something about proposals, I think. Yep, budgeting proposals. Budgeting, well, who put that in there? <laughs> That's what we really need, so. Well, um, we've we got a, we, yeah, we do have a webinar today on proposals as well. How about that? So a little bit of a coincidence. So yeah. it's almost like we're organized people. It's almost like having a roadmap, which we talked about in January, um, benefits you as you plan out your year. So we do have quoting versus proposing for dummies, which we started off, I think, last year or the year before. Because um, Skip had a great concept. He, he kept saying, like, it is frustrating as an account manager to work on a quote for like four to six hours, walk into your client and just completely get steamrolled. Like, hey, we can't afford this. We can't do it. Um, and now that six hours, you do not get that time back. Yep. Well, I, so that, that really hit home with me because, uh, you know, working in the corporate world for many years, you know, we had meetings and, you know, why not? The company's, you know, buying freshments or whatever. Uh, we can put our phones on do not disturb, or whatever it is. You know, it's it's all great to have those corporate meetings. But then I move and start working as director of ops from an MSP and I call a meeting and I have my whole team in there. All right. And so at the time, you know, it's like eight engineers. Right? And you know, we we grew a lot later. So this became even more uh, you know, poignant for me as I called these meetings and I'm looking around the room and just a quick bit of, you know, napkin math. And I'm going, wow, I better say something really impactful in this meeting, because if I wrap these guys up for an hour, that's a full day, full eight hours of non-billable time. All right. Yeah. And so, you know, that, that really, you know, began to resonate with me. And when it comes down to, putting together quotes and getting these things together for your clients. If you're, you know, sinking significant amount of hours, it's not just the, the time that, you know, it costs for that engineer. It's the loss of revenue in them doing something else. So yeah. this is really, really important to, to make you more money, to, to save money so that you can make more money. Yeah. And, you know, for you smaller shops out there, this is super important because when you're quoting somebody, that's time you're not working. That's time you're not uh, doing lead gen. That's time you're not closing a new project. So for smaller MSPs, it's so much harder because you could be doing something productive because you're wearing so many hats. So, but then, you know, you've been an engineer your entire life. You're used to this. Like you get a quote for something, you buy it, you put it in place. What more could there possibly be to this process? And for larger MSPs, they're like, duh, you do a proposal. And it's like, well, what's a proposal? A proposal is a spitball. Here's what I think something's going to cost. Like, hey, I need a new PC for my admin assistant. What do you need? Uh, she needs a monitor, a mouse, you know, it'd be great. She had dual monitors. Uh, does she do anything like crazy like Adobe or any, any big uh, projects? No, no, just basic word processing. Cool. Um, that's going to be about $1,500. You can do that off the top of your head. Is that a quote? No. no. That is a proposal. You're proposing a budget for this client. Now, you're going to then they're, they're gonna say, oh, $1,500. That sounds about right. And then you're going to go out to your favorite supplier and you're going to get an exact number and send it to them so that you can buy that is a quote yep. and it seems like we're picking at this that there's a difference like one 
takes you about 30 seconds and two questions to, to build. The other one takes you about a half an hour because you have to call Dell or you have to log into the site, grab this PC and the specs, build it out and send it. Or if you have them on site at your, at your MSP, you gotta go to the back office, make sure you have the inventory for it, set it up. That takes a half an hour and an hour. That's billable time. And so you need to think of proposals as a way to save you an insane amount of time and money. And it also sets expectations with your client. Cause you could say your client could go, oh yeah, I need, a, I need a PC to do video editing for my admin assistant. Cause she's gonna be doing this, uh, this marketing uh, push for us. So she needs to be able to do Adobe Premiere and say, okay, I need a, I need a power workstation. So that's gonna be about uh, $2,500. Oh, you need those extra monitors? Yeah, you're gonna want those uh, those super clear monitors. So that's another thousand dollars a piece. So we're looking at a four thousand dollar build by the time markups applied. And they go, wait, 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 wait. Maybe four thousand dollars isn't where we want to be. I'm like, tell you what, I can build you a basic Adobe machine that will, you know, great for like a one to two time a week. It's not gonna save you a lot of time, but it'll get the job done. About two grand. Yeah. Oh, that's much better. Can you please build that? Yes. <laughs> and you know what? That that 60 second conversation, that five minute conversation just saved you two hours. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and that, that cost saving adds up really, really quick. I mean, uh, I'm sure many of you can look at your quotes that you have flipped over to lost status and, you know, review those and and get an estimate on just a handful of them how yeah. much time did it take for us to put this quote together and could we have changed the course of this conversation that we're having if we'd started out at the very very beginning by setting expectations with our clients getting that budgeting proposal in front of them first and yeah. that that can you you can do so again you know back to my example there, as a, a Cisco partner, uh, I feel our quoting was a little more complex than maybe it needed to be. All right. But um, <laughs> it was really, really easy for us to dump nearly a day's worth of work into creating mid level sort of quotes. And obviously, if it went on above that, and we did a lot of those projects. Those those quotes just got astronomical in the amount of time that we had to put in. It got so big, in fact, that we were budgeting margin into projects to cover the quoting preparation. And it, it was just a it was a mess. So, yeah, let, let's set the expectations right up the front right front because it's just going to make everyone's life easier, yours and your customers. Yeah. Yeah, and it it sets actually this is this is normal procedure for the corporate world. If you are in any kind of leadership position in the corporate world, this is normal. Every October, you know, or depending on if you're government employee, uh, March, April, you know, you have to get together a budget for the next year, and all is it's a budget proposal, and that's all you care about, and so. The, the important thing is when it comes to corporations, even small businesses, when it comes to proposals and budget proposals, that rules your next year. It's like your calendar. You have a meeting on your calendar. You're going to be in this place at this time and you show up. But sometimes bad things happen and you're not able to get there. So a calendar is a proposal for what you want to do with your time during the day. Then when you actually do something, that's you're budgeting your time. You're 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 actually quoting out. You're actually doing something with your time. In a financial situation, you're proposing this is what we want to do for a financial situation next year or next quarter or next month or next week. And then a quote says, "Here's what we actually are going to do." And so it's a commitment. And our tool is built to make this super duper easy. That's what we call this. Quoting versus proposing for dummies. Our software does not quote. It doesn't. There are some fantastic quoting tools out there. They're insanely complex because quoting is hard. It is hard, and then you need a bunch of, of commitments. What we're doing is covering that gap to save you a good four to six hours by giving you the ability to propose on-site with your customer. Your customer should be there when you're proposing. 
They should be sitting there having some input into what you're doing. So if I get this right, I think I grabbed the right window. Skip, let me know if I got the right one. Yep, there we go. It's coming up. So Acme Court is my favorite redheaded child to to um, add things to. So you can see here we have. Let let me set context here. So think about this. What you just said, you know, about being in front of your customers. All right. I think sometimes we kind of have to unpack how we've gotten to where we are today. All right. So in in the early days of this managed service provider business model, the the theme of many of the conversations was don't hire an IT company, hire an MSP as a fractional IT employee. And that, that made a lot of sense. And there's a a real validity there that we need to kind of hold on to. So if you are an employee at a company, an IT employee, and your company is looking at doing something new, you're going to be involved in a meeting. You may be talking with a CFO or some other division or whatever. You're talking with someone in the organization and y'all are planning out, you know, the expenses, the budget, whatever it is for next year. It's not one of these elements where they send you an email as the employee and says, hey, just put together uh, a spreadsheet for us and send it over, okay? That that doesn't happen within an organization. There's always a conversation. Now, I, I suppose there's some places that aren't great if you, you do send it over, but it, it's usually crap, right? It doesn't, it doesn't do what it needs to do. And we, in the industry right now, I think we've fallen into this trap of, oh, I'm just going to send over a really cool quote. Uh, We had a brief conversation. I think I can sell this. I'm going to just send an email. And we leave the conversation part out thinking we'll have that after we get the nibble, after we get them kind of interested and working along. And let's turn that around. Let's, Let's make sure that we're going down the right direction before we put bait in the water. Yeah, and again, it's it's all about that conversation and, and contextualizing the conversation um, is it, kind of what Skip's getting to there. This, so if you look at this dashboard, the whole purpose of this last rollout we did was to contextualize the data you're giving to your customer. So this dashboard is unique. This particular Acme Core, what he what they care about there is you went in during your QBR, your client touch point, and you said, hey, what can we report on that you care about? And then we built this dashboard with them. And so they want to know their Office 365 alignment, slapped up a widget there. They want to know their project roadmap um, for approved projects and uh, proposed projects, put that there. We want to know the 12-month forecast and our PC replacement budget. There we go. What about depreciating assets? Got that. So we moved all these around and put these widgets in place with the client. So what answers do you want about it? And we guide them through that. And now we have this great thing of they're they're trying to get NIST uh, compliant. So they've got their NIST assessment score here. And here is their stack adoption because they're, they know they've been falling behind. They know they've got a lot of depreciated hardware that they just, they don't have the budget to do it all right now, but they know they want to see how long it's going to take me to get there. So I've got a story here. And so when I go in and talk to my client about the proposal, I say, here's where we are. So I say, the 12-month project forecast is $472,000. Now, take this with a grain of salt, people. This is my demo account. I've added so many projects to this, I can't even tell you how many are left. But you know what I can tell you? I can tell you that $472,000 of projects are sitting on the table right now with this client. I know that these are the approved projects because I've done this many demos that I've approved this many projects. What are they? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now. I can also say there's $45,000 in assets to be replaced over the next rolling 12 months. And so the client says, what can we do right now? And I said, okay, let's talk this through. And so you deep dive into a budget tool. And so you come over here and now we can say, what does this look like? Let's design a budget together for the next 12 months, a proposal. This section of your meeting shouldn't take any more than 15, 20 minutes. And so you should come in here and discuss with them 
let's talk about just the things I came in with um, for, for to propose. I'm going to uncheck all of these other ideas, all these other projects. All right. This is what the proposal is. I would like to do this. Now, we do have a feature coming out that's going to make a lot of people happy. I know it makes Skip happy. You click on this data point here, and it'll bring up the list of projects. That would probably roll out Monday during the Monday release window. But what you're going to see is you can now talk to your client. Is this budget good? Can you afford this? This is going to meet all the goals on that dashboard we talked about before. The projects we have there are all right here. Is this a budget you like? And they say, oh, yeah, that's definitely within budget. Or you say, you know what? We had a bad first quarter. Is there any way we can push some of this off until third quarter, fourth quarter? And in quarter two, we can make this a little bit simpler. Sure. Let's go ahead and talk about the quarterly budgets. So here's quarter one. Let's look at quarter two. Quarter two, we're looking at uh, $5,000 in budgets going on. No proposed projects. You're looking pretty thin at this time. What do you want to do? And now we move forward with this idea. So we've got some servers that are depreciating and we have no progress going on. Okay, we're good. I'm, I'm glad to see this. And so you can actually, you know, make it look nice. You can move it around. You can depreciate things. And once you're done, then you export the proposed project. There's no projects in this one. Looks like there's zero projects with one new project being created. So this project for April is going to get created in a proposal. And your client's going to say, do I want to do this? $5,000 for next quarter is well within budget for us. You can go ahead and say Q2. And put in a nice little like, you know, Alice was in on this. Alice. A note here. So this is the full editor. If you need more information in here, if there's something that you have and we need to do a little uh, code insert, we can flip over to code view there and you can get creative with that. So we can take that up a step if, if you need to go yeah. there. So this, this proposal has been created. It's ready to go. Everybody's happy. And uh, uh, Paul, was that you saying yay for the, uh, the, the click on the vertice? That was a recommendation from somebody and I could not recommend like, hey, can we click on this and, and just get it dived down? Now, Paul, the, the developers did um, pull a fast one on me. I'll, I'm going to just vent for a second. So here's, but for, for first, ugh, ADHD. Um, first, projects, you now have your proposal. You can send this off to a client. You, small shop, big shop, doesn't matter. I just saved you six hours. You just saved yourself six hours. This is ready to go when April comes around. So in a week and a half, you're going to send a quote to them for everything that's on this project. Looks like what's on this, um, some QA uh, server. Done. You're done. As long as you stay below $5,000, the client will instantly approve this. They're happy with it. You still have to get approval through QuoteWorks or whatever quoting tool you're using, but the hard work has been done. You're pre-approved. You can walk in and shop with confidence now. Skip, you know real estate. Pre-approvals are everything. It saves Absolutely. you a ton of time. Now you know what kind of house you can shop for. Now you know when you go to the bank after you, you, you've fallen in love with this house that you're not going to get rejected. This is the beauty of this. This is all we're doing. It's a common thing. So anyways, back to Paul, the, uh, the, the, the bug that I found while the, they were demoing it was, we come in here. Hey, that's not right. Um, you click on this and it takes you to the project, right? Project, click project. But if it's an asset, they didn't put an asset filter in. Yeah, doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> so they're working on that right now. I'm hoping they'll have it rolled in by the uh, the window Monday. So uh, it's always funny when a, when a dev gives you a demo of the feature you asked for. They give you the demo of what you asked for. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute, why can't I click on the other link? So the goal here is that you should be able to see like, where are things, what's in this vertice, what's in this point, but you should be able to create a proposal for them. So 
Uh, the Monday update for everyone not initiated to this, you click on this button here. It's going to take you to the project roadmap and give you the layout for what that data point is. That way you can manipulate it. So you'll be able to go to the project roadmap. So if somebody says, hey, this is too much for next quarter, it's okay, that's fine. Come over to your project roadmap and start moving things around. Move things out of Q2 into Q3, but have them watch you do it because when they watch you move things from Q to Q3, they're, it's occurring to them what technology debt is. Yes. You don't get to just delete this cost. It doesn't go away. It has to go somewhere. If they don't have the replacement PC on their project here, that just means at some point in time, you're going to have to replace this PC. Also, the PC they have is going to start wearing down. And that's going to cause them time and personnel. And that just becomes your conversation. You all know how to have this conversation. But now they get to see you move things around like, oh, so we, we can't afford um, the networking project that we we approved. Um, OK, well, let's dive in there and let's move this around. And you're going to move it over to Q3. I wish I could drag and drop these. Yeah, that I was playing with that the other day. That would. Uh... Really so now we've that. moved into Q3, but the client's like, I still have to pay that, right? Like, yes. <laughs> no. uh, unless you, you unless you want out. to, and, and then, you, then it gives you a chance to explain what a UPS is and why it matters that the, the, the batteries stay fresh. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's an easy conversation, people. Do you like your network? Do you like to have power to your switches? Oh, you do? Okay, UPSs. Do you like your switches burning out ahead of time? No. Okay, then let's get these UPSs in place. And we have like to swap to... the batteries every so many years. So yep. do you like them um, to catch on fire at 630 in the morning on a Monday morning and catch your data center on fire? You know, and, so this and, and have this... your IT team call the fire department because they're the one yeah. that noticed the high temperature alert. So this <laughs> is this is the proposal you have. This is how you're doing proposal. You're moving these around in the meeting with the client so they can see how much things cost. And they're giving you the verbal, and then they're giving you the soft approval via the proposal document that you share. Now everybody's happy. Everybody has a clear picture and set expectations. And this whole thing, like me demoing this and uh, Skip and I getting off the rails here, took 25 minutes. And now I have an entire quarter's uh, projects proposed to my client and ready to go. So when I my engineer comes on site and says, oh, I need to order the new UPSs. Do I have a proposal for this? Yes, it's in, uh, we can see that it is in green phase, which means that it has been approved. So all I have to do is get a quote for this. And they can send it off to their quoting team. You can create a ticket and say, hey, please quote me out five new UPSs. Engineers on site, budget is 20 or $8,700. Quoting people go in and say, okay, I got a deal on APCs. I'm gonna get for $5,500. Yep. Markup's going to be a grand. You're still under the 8,700. Good to go. Yeah. So that's on you how you want to pass on savings to your clients. If you're just like, nope, it'll be 8,700. I'll show them it's 8,650. And yeah. then you've got a $3,000 margin there. That's on you. <laughs> uh, well, you I mean, it, 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 it is the opportunity because, you know, when we get into those quotes, there are there's always this option. Well, if we did this or we did that, and sometimes it comes down to the amount of work that you want to put in to, to build this out. And if you have a high degree of confidence that that request to generate a quote that's in your queue is going to close, you can put in the extra effort to make sure that you're getting the best margin in that deal. Maybe you track down that account rep and make them give you the price deviation that you know they will versus oh, I don't have time to do that. I've got four other quotes I got to get out after this one. And you just let it slide. You have the time to register the deal so that you know another competitor doesn't get in on you. Whatever it is, you can make your quoting process that you have today. And that's the beauty about it. We're not rebuilding your quoting process. We're taking the one you have today and making it work better. Making it much, much simpler. And I know everybody always asks, like, oh, can I just take an uh, can I take an approved uh proposal and move it into a quote? Yeah, maybe someday. 
right now the whole goal is you this is the process we're doing the corporate environment this is the process you do in a larger environment you have your budget spreadsheet and then when you get ready to quote you go to the site where you're quoting and you build this out yeah that's how it's done and uh, in large corporations you have an entire asset management software that is able to help you with this or an entire team i know when i worked at some of the larger corporations the it was beautiful all I had to do was quote out what I wanted or or propose what I wanted. And I was sent to the asset management team and they took care of everything else for me. Right. So this is this is normal. This is how things work. You have a quoting tool and you have a proposal to, tool. Often your proposal tool is just an Excel spreadsheet. We have made it easy for you. Stop mm -hmm. quoting without getting approval from your clients. Well, and, and the important this part is show them that layout. Yes. It's not just a different layout, it's a collaborative layout. So yeah. if you if you say I can do all of that with Excel, that's fine. Does that mean that you're going to bring Excel up and you're going to, you know, edit cells and formulas and, you know, drag rows and columns around? Is that what you're going to do collaborative with your clients? Is, is that a constructive engagement to be in? Or do you want a graph up there so that you can provide a conversation that is focused on the goal and not the formula, right? Yeah. So really get that around. Now, to kind of fill in some more details here. So the proposals themselves won't go out to your quoting system, but the projects that are within those can. Yep. So if you get one up there, and that works out really good because like an asset management project, when you look at a 12-month slice, it's going to generate a project for every month that has assets in there. So maybe... 12 month period, 10 months out of those we need uh, to order new assets. It will generate 10 projects. And the way that's going to work is that's going to be approved. But the month before, whatever your cycle is, that it comes time to do that, you go into the tool, you take that project, and you push it out to your, your system as an opportunity. Then you yep. work it through, through the system. So um, there is some, some, some workflow in there that can really help flow and speed things along. Yep. And so this is proposals for dummies. Don't use your quoting tool to propose. It's going to cost you too much time. Unless you're really good, like you've got a formula and you've got business workflow, then by all means, keep doing it. The proposal is what your client is expecting. In fact, a lot of your smaller clients don't know to do proposals because they're in the same boat as you. They think they have to quote everything. Yep. You're going to be teaching them. The two-fold of thing happens when you're looking at the project roadmaps and the budget is, yeah, you're talking about today, but their mind is already anchoring tomorrow's stuff. They're seeing that graph and they're seeing that bump. They know that's coming up. And so they can ask ahead of time or they can like start setting their mental expectations like, oh, my budget's going up. Then, or they see on the project roadmap things that are happening, things that you're moving around that they're pushing and risks they're taking, all is happening with them in the room. So that frustration of your client pushing off projects to later, that stress gets added to them too. Because now they can see it in that little yep. Gantt chart we have. They can see it on the budget graph at that this swell coming up next quarter, next year is getting bigger and bigger. Either they need to get a grant and cut that off, or they need to start chipping away at that hill in working with you to come up with a series of proposals that are within their budget. And this is a lot of the fight you guys have. A lot of the reason your clients say no is because they don't have a budget for it. Now they do. Yeah. Do this. Bring this into your workflow. Make Save yourself time and set expectations for your clients, and you will close more projects, and it'll be faster. There you go. All right. Thank you, everyone. Show up to this webinar in about 20, whoa, uh, 28, minutes. 28 minutes. This is a really good one. Taylor Business Group and us put it together. And the idea was is to generate, um, help you get clear views of your financial data as an MSP. So it's an MSP-centric finance uh, webinar built for you guys, built for you to understand, like, where are my finances going? What do I care about? And so we brought an industry, industry expert to talk about this and to show you what you can do to get a grasp on what's going on in your MSP. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next week. See ya.